Hey guys, welcome to The Beat Goes On. Today, the Music Pixie and I, Miss Kelly, we are sitting down with Miss J. Moon of Midnights with Moon out of Denver. We're doing a uh, dual interview here where she's going to learn a little bit more about me and what I do in the Phoenix music community, and we are going to get to learn more about what she does in the Denver music community. So, Jay, welcome to the show. Thank you. Welcome to Denver, first of all. How was your stay here so far? It has been absolutely beautiful. Um, We were a little worried on the drive here because we did hit some rain, and we didn't pack for rain because I reached out to Johnny Bullock the day before we left, and I said, what's the weather like in Denver? And he said, 70s and 80s. And I said, so I don't need my snow parka and boots. And he laughed and said, nope. If you're in Canada, you would. <laughs> right? <laughs> well, when I lived here in Denver as a kid, I was only here for about six months. And it was um, mid-October through February. So, yeah, knee-deep snow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it still snows like that here. And I've only been here for two years. <laughs> right? Some things don't change. No. Yeah. They just keep getting better. Absolutely. Aging like fine wine. Oh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So, you know, you are, you don't just have Midnights with Moon. I'm learning that you also work with military broadcasting. I do. I do. We're actually sitting in the um, MBR studio at the Colorado Media School right now where it all started. We are, and yeah, guys, we are literally, I am looking at this military memorabilia. I am looking at the banners for military radio. I'm kind of bummed. I'm not seeing your banner up anywhere in here, but. I don't have one yet. I'm working on it. Fantastic. So if y'all make banners, you're going to want to reach out to Jay and, and picture your banner company because she needs a banner. Mm-hmm. Great. Mm-hmm. And, that's, and that's, that's, that's one of the things that's so much fun or a part of the fun of what we get to do is I get to help businesses spread their word and sell their merch. Nice. I need new merch. <laughs> I, I, I got people, I, girl, I got people that can do t-shirts for you. I've got people that can do stickers for you. Okay, I, yeah. actu- I actually have a guy that does banners, so we, we can get you that info, I promise. Yeah, yeah. I'm okay with that, because <laughs> my embroiderer has been um, backlogged, so it well, takes a while for the, us to get new merch out. The <laughs> banners that my banner guy does aren't in, the embroidery banners. They are the, the good... Um, just like what we have back there for the H-Train show. As a matter of fact, yeah, yeah like yeah. that. They're the good stuff. Yeah, that's that, what we use. That you can roll and it won't crack. Yeah, we usually <laughs> use digital. If you're, if you're behind, if you're not on if you're not on video, we have a screen that pulls down that we just overlay all of our individual logos a gre- It's a green screen, guys. It's, it's legit. A, yeah, a legit a green screen. And um, it works, sort of. It works, sort of. Sort of. Sorry, guys. Sorry, H-Train. Sorry, uh... Pipes. We, uh, I know you worked really hard on the studio, but it, it, yeah, it's, it's something. Hey, it's <laughs> better than the studio I use, which is wherever I'm sitting with my laptop. You know what? Sometimes uh, that's the best. I work out of my home normally, so this I haven't been in the MBR studio in about a year. So, wow. yeah, a lot has changed. <laughs> uh, it's it it is definitely um, what we do is special. Yeah, what we get to do, we get. I. I for me personally, I get the pleasure of being a fan and getting to meet my stars and getting to talk to, talk about, learn about the human side yeah. of my stars. And that right there is invaluable. It's it's amazing. Yeah. It's When I started doing my podcast, The Beat Goes On, which is where I was sitting down and interviewing the bands, that idea came from me having made friends with the bands. And the thought process of what a musician was like versus the reality of what I learned they really were. Night and day. And I wanted to share that. 
I wanted people to see these guys, and I say guys because most of the musicians that I work with are guys, um, but we do have some in beautifully, incredibly talented women musicians in Phoenix as well. Oh, absolutely you do. And, absolutely. And, you know, um, Tulin Howie, she is the lead singer for Empire of Desire. Which will be um, at the Dawn of the Rising concert, I believe, of Flossum and Jetsum in yes. Arizona. Oh, yes, Empire of Desire is yeah. on that bill. Yes, yes, you bet they are. Amazing. Okay. Um, wait until you get to meet Tulin. She is this little tiny thing. Um, like five foot nothing, teeny tiny little thing, and then you hear that woman open her mouth. Nice. And this sound comes out. This beautiful, amazing, powerful sound that should never fit in that little tiny body. But somehow does. <laughs> but does. <laughs> and she is the sweetest, most amazing human. Um, see her, you can follow her on Facebook and you can see that she's always posting all of these incredibly positive messages. Even when things are going sideways in her world, when she lost her mom, she was still trying to post the positive and keep that positive yeah. going. I know the feeling. A absolutely. Yeah. And so she's just an amazing person to be around. A lot of the musicians out there are like that. That's one of the reasons that I love getting to work with them. Yeah. Is they're, they've been through so much. So many of them have been through so much that they have found a way to rise above it. And that right there speaks volumes more than ticket sales, venue sales. Yeah. You know, to have a personality and be Absolutely. humble through ad, like adversity. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, it really speaks volumes about their character. Mm -hmm. We've got yeah. musicians in Arizona that have survived cancer. Really? I know a couple of them. And we have got musicians that have made it to the other side of addiction. A lot of them. A lot of them have made it to the other side of addiction. And again, that also speaks volumes. You know, it, it really does. The, what it puts into their music, their life experiences is amazing. Um, I have, back home, everybody's tired, getting tired of hearing his name, and I'm still going to say it, Patrick Flannery. He is the lead singer of St. Madness. Mm -hmm. He has been in the music for well over 40 years. Yeah. 28 years with St. Madness. Um, somehow, I got lucky. I got blessed to have that man decide he liked me and decide that I was worthy for him to share his knowledge and pass down his knowledge and experience to me. That is, well, you do that. You teach people here at the school on, in, on their internships. You were telling me you... Yeah. You share your knowledge and experience with those people to help bring them up. Yeah, that is true. That's, that's amazing thing to do, to give of yourself. That You're not going to get anything back for that. No, and at the fact that if I can make one person stay and teach them one thing, it doesn't even necessarily mean based in Colorado. I teach people um, from Tennessee, from... Um, Wow, we got DJs from Italy. We have uh, oh, wow. like Max Waite from the Just Wait Here show. He's in Missouri. He's the one is a talent scout that's connected me with so many of these amazing bands. Therefore, in a roundabout way, connected me with you. Right. Yeah. So, Absolutely. You know, and, and it's that that giving of yourself, knowing that you are never going to get back anything for it. That is the most amazing gift that you can get. Yeah, and it's it's uplifting, and I don't want to say life-changing, because that's kind of cliche, but it is. It, it, it is. is. Um, for me, uh, I because we've lost so many musicians out of Arizona, I've started trying to figure out how, how to carry on my legacy when I'm gone. Yeah, and that's, t that, that's definitely a tough question. Because who's going to pick it up? 
Yeah. Who's going to pick up and, and do these shows or do their own podcast? Who's going to be the next person to step up and support the bands? And for me, I, I direct my focus on the local. Yes. Where I know you do local and national. For me, I, I look do. at it and go, the national don't need me. My locals need me. And 100%. 100%. Oh. And with independent music, uh, most of the venues, uh, I don't know if um, whoever's listening right now is aware that we do have some of the local venues that are starting to open back up here in Denver. Right. And Tarot Hall being one absolutely As a matter of fact i get to we kelly and i the pixie and i get to sit down with ken oh, good. um i'm waiting for a message from him as a matter of fact to pinpoint the exact time it is either going to be later today or sometime tomorrow we're sitting down with him so that he can tell us the history the of antero hall, hall. That yeah. It's had three names. It still does. Yeah. It's, yeah. I, I And I've had mm-hmm. Denver musicians mm-hmm. call it by any one yeah. of the three. It took me a while yeah. to that they were talking about the same thing. Yeah, it's, and Tara Hall, there's X Saloon, mm-hmm. which um, is hugely iconic. Um, famous yeah. musicians, Mushroomhead, for example, my husband Josh saw them before they were super famous. And yeah. there's so many other, right? you know, names that goes by. And, you yeah. know. And, and, so getting to sit with Ken and learn the history of that place. We lost a place like that back in October of 19. We lost Joe's Grotto in Phoenix. Oh, that sounds so familiar. Joe's Grotto was the place that, wow. that's how you knew you made it. Yeah. Nice. Is you got to play at Joe's Grotto. I would say kind of Moe's is kind of that equivalent here in Colorado, and I understand you guys are going to be going to Moe's a little bit we soon, too. We are. <laughs> we are going to Moe's Friday night. We get to meet Maris Stoll, Maris the Great. Um, funny thing is, um, as we talk to the other bands, um, the first question out of their mouth when they find out that we're going to meet Maris is, is he going to kill you? Yeah. <laughs> now, this you need you. to explain. So, for all of our guys now, we don't just broadcast here within uh, North America. We broadcast all over the world, mainly to the troops overseas. So, you're <laughs> nice. going to have to explain this. Uh, all right. So, so that we don't have people coming and trying to harm poor Maris. Are you okay? Oh, my God. Are you okay? <laughs> Give us a safe word. <laughs> so... Um, Maris is a, I don't want to call him a character, although he is a character. He's the undead. Um, he is the undead. Nice. Um, he has a complete makeover that you'll never know who he, what he really looks like. Um, he is in character pretty much 24-7 if he is communicating with anybody outside of his intimate circle. Um, and his shtick and that sounds so rude to call it that, I, but I don't know another way to phrase it. Um, what he's known for, yeah, yeah, is, I worded as well, but I can't yeah, so hard. <laughs> his his band goes out and kills any, figuratively, figu- figuratively, figu- ladies figu- and gentlemen, figuratively, figu- yeah. figuratively <laughs> on <laughs> film for film, yes. goes out and kills bands that they see as a threat to their growth in the oh, Denver okay. music. Um, mm-hmm. I have some good friends that have been killed, in quotes, by Maris that years ago, and they still laugh and talk about yeah, the story. It's just so much fun. Yeah, that would be. That's one of those things you would never forget. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Johnny, Johnny Bullock, he is the guitar player for One Track Mind. Um, he was formerly of Rogue. He was formerly of Broken Parts. Um, he was formerly of Just Steel. Oh, that sounds familiar. Um, that was years and years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, he's, he is a staple in the Denver music community. Everybody knows Johnny. Everybody loves Johnny. And, okay, Johnny's worth loving. He's an amazing man. Um, He was just yesterday laughing about Maris ate his face. Okay. (laughs) Because he was too pretty. Okay. 
that's how you know you've made it. Right, because... <laughs>